you're probably quite familiar with the concept of crop factor when it comes to focal length. That if you're using a sensor that is smaller than a full frame sensor, you generally talk about not only the focal length of the lens, but also the effective focal length, i.e. what lens would you have to mount onto a full frame camera to give you that same angle of view. But there is another notion that you apply a crop factor to your aperture as well. But it gets a little bit confusing, and I've seen people trip up on this because you don't always have to apply the crop factor to the aperture, only in some select scenarios. So in this video, we're going to talk about when you do apply crop factor and why, and also when you don't. The first no-no is when we're talking about exposure. I've seen people in the past suggest that when you're talking about an APS-C lens versus a full frame lens, that the APS-C lens at the same aperture doesn't let in the same amount of light. This just isn't true. Simple test for that, here we have the Sony a6500, which is an APS-C camera body, and here we have the Sigma 16mm f1.4, which is an APS-C specific lens. And here we have the Sony 16 to 35 mm f4, which is a full frame lens. And the simple test for this, we take an exposure with this lens and an exposure with that lens, and we see if there's any major difference. So we'll keep the exact same settings for both shots. So because that's an f4 lens, we'll set this to f4 at a 30th of a second and ISO 100. And then we will switch the lenses over. And again, at 16mm, f4, 30th of a second, ISO 100. And you can see the exposures look pretty much identical. Any difference that you would see in the exposure between an APS-C lens and a full frame lens, or any two lenses for that matter, is purely down to the light transmission capabilities, the T-stop value of those lenses. It has nothing to do with the size of the sensor. Now, I know what you might be thinking that, okay, Dave, that's great, but that's both on an APS-C camera body. What about an APS-C versus a full frame body? Well, earlier I ran a very similar experiment where I mounted this 55 1.8 on both the A6500 and my A7 III. And I took some test shots of a tape measure that I sellotaped onto the table here. And you can see that comparing up the same lens with the same settings on a full frame camera and an APS-C camera, both exposures again are identical. The only difference here is obviously the fields of view are different because you've got the crop factor from the APS-C lens. But another thing that these images show is depth of field. You can see looking at the tape measure here, both shots have the exact same depth of field. Regardless of whether it's a full frame camera or an APS-C camera, the same focal length, the same aperture value, the same subject distance produces the exact same depth of field. Now this is where your crop factoring, your aperture, does come into play with your depth of field. Now I know that sounds a little contradicting because I've just said that the depth of field of full frame and APS-C stay the same. Where the difference comes in, where the effective aperture value comes in, is when you are comparing up a full frame system to an APS-C system and trying to get the exact same look. Because with those two test shots, as I've just said, the angles of view that are produced are different. That's because this is a full frame lens and on the A7 III, it's seeing a 55 millimeter field of view. Whereas on the APS-C body, we have a 1.5 times crop factor. So this is actually seeing an effective focal length of about 82 and a half millimeters. But if we wanted to replicate the look that this produces on the APS-C body on a full frame system, we'd have to shoot with a lens with the same effective focal length. Now, because a full frame camera doesn't have any crop factor, we'd need to shoot with a lens with a focal length around about 82 and a half millimeters. Well, the closest I have for that is this, the 85mm f1.8. Let's get them out of the way. So now you might be thinking, okay, the 55mm on the APS-C body gives us about the same angle of view as the 85 does on a full frame camera body. And both of them are f1.8, and we know that shooting at f1.8 are either on full frame or APS-C gives us the same exposure. So surely they produce the same looking image. Not quite. They won't quite be the same because the depths of field will be different. 
So let's use my old favorite of light lines to describe this. So there's three factors that we say affect depth of field. Your focal length, your aperture value, and your distance to subject. Now, in terms of distance to subject, let's say we have camera set up here and we have our subject here. Now, we have light lines traveling between the camera and the subject. At the point of focus, i.e. on the subject, those light lines need to converge. Either side of that point of focus, there is a distance where the light lines stay just close enough that it still perceives as being in focus to us. Once they separate too much, then everything starts to get blurred, and the further apart they go, the blurrier everything gets. So if we reduce the distance between the subject and the camera, then the light lines have to converge faster, so we would get a shallower depth of field. If we move the subject further away, then the light lines will converge more gradually, and then we'd get a deeper depth of field. But in this instance, we're talking about keeping the subject the exact same distance on both the APS-C and the full frame shot. So now we're left with focal length and aperture value. And these two are actually linked. And what they're talking about is the physical diameter of the aperture opening. Because with a wider aperture opening, the light lines are gonna start further apart from each other. So over the same distance would have to converge faster, shallower depth of field. If we were to use a much smaller aperture, the light lines start closer together, they don't converge as fast, deeper depth of field. The aperture value, the F number that we refer to, is actually a ratio of the focal length to the aperture diameter. So we can rearrange that equation to work out what the actual diameter of our aperture is. So for example, with this 16mm F1.4, that means that it's a 16mm physical focal length and the aperture diameter is 1.4 times smaller. So to work out the aperture diameter of this lens, we would do 16mm divided by the 1.4 aperture and that gives us about 11.5. So the aperture is 11.5 millimeters wide. That's the furthest distance that the light lines can start from each other. This, on the other hand, a 55mm f1.8. So it's only a 1.8 versus a 1.4. But if you do 55 mil divided by 1.8, you get around about 30 millimeters. So even though it's a third of a stop slower than the 16 mil, it has a physically much wider aperture. So if we were taking a shot of the same subject at the same distance, the depth of field that this produces is a lot shallower. Obviously, the look that the image is going to produce is extremely different as well. But right now, we're just focused on depth of field. Now, here comes the difference because the aperture diameter is linked to the physical focal length, not the effective focal length. So while this lens has an aperture diameter of 30 millimeters, this 85 1.8 has a aperture diameter of 47 millimeters. So the physical iris opening on this is 50% bigger than this lens. So the only way to get the two images looking as close to each other as possible is to have not only the same angle of view and the same subject distance, but to also be shooting with the same physical aperture diameter, which means we would need to stop the aperture of this down so the iris wasn't 47 mil, but was closer to 30. So to work that out, we bring up the equation again and we do F equals focal length divided by aperture diameter. We know the focal length is 85 mil. We know we want the aperture diameter to be 30 mil. 85 mil divided by 30 mil gives us just short of 2.8, which means we would need to stop this lens down to F 2.8 to get the exact same look as this lens would on an APS-C at F 1.8. But if you wanted to work it out for yourself, you just take the same equations that we've just done, change the values to suit your settings, and you'll be able to calculate it no problem. But that's it for this video, guys. As always, if you have any questions or queries, comment boxes down below. Thank you so much for stopping by, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.